What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World and of course my tutorial series for the A10C. Today we're going to take a look at the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missile. This is a fairly complex missile, but it's actually really easy to use. It is a precision weapon and it is good for standoff engagements of things like tanks and AAA and some short-range SAMs and things of that nature. Uh, primarily, the Maverick would be used for the anti-vehicle role, moving vehicles, etc. Got a couple of different flavors of it. Uh, let's just go to the armament screen here and look at them. We can carry the Maverick only on Stations 9 and Stations 3, and it is under the missiles heading, and we have a few variations here. We have the AGM-65D, G, H, and K. So we've got four variations of the Maverick. We also have some training versions, but we're not going to worry about those. The AGM-65D and G are both infrared guided missiles. So what that means is they actually use a sort of a FLIR seeker similar to our targeting pod. They use a seeker similar to the targeting pod to find and lock up a contrast on the ground as a valid target to then fire and guide towards that target. The AGM-65D is a uh, smaller missile, uh, well, same size missile, but it's a smaller warhead, so it's a little bit lighter at 125 pound warhead. The AGM-65G uh, is a heavier missile with a 300 pound warhead. The 125 pound warhead can be carried on a triple ejector rack in one, two, or three missile configurations, uh, whereas the AGM-65G is a little bit too heavy for the triple ejector rack and thus you can only carry one of them per station. We also have the AGM-65H and the AG, whoops, the AGM-65H and the AGM-65K. These two variants of the AGM-65 are what are called electro-optical or EO seeker missiles. Uh, and what that means is instead of a FLIR camera sensor, they have a simple CCD sens uh, sensor, very also similar to the targeting pod's CCD mode in which they will also try to establish a contrast lock with something on the ground. When we actually get in the air and look at the missiles, you're going to think I'm looking at the targeting pod, but in reality, we're actually going to be looking through the seeker head of the missile itself. Each seeker head, you can even see it here. Let me just close this. You can even see it here on the, on the missile itself. That's like a, basically a little camera lens. And just like the targeting pod, we can slew it around and such, but we'll, uh, I'll show you that once we get in the air. Before we take off, however, let's go over and look at our DSMS real quick. And there isn't much to change, but just out of uh, interest, um, let's take a look at the profile. There's only one profile called Maverick. And really, these settings don't matter that much because we're not going to be dropping these in CCIP or CCRP. It's technically, it's a different kind of launch parameter altogether, yet for whatever reason, you can actually change the mode from CCIP to CCRP, but it, we're just going to leave it at CCIP because it doesn't matter. Chain settings, uh, as with previous weapons, we can change the minimum altitude, but we don't need to, so we're going to just return and go back to profile main and stat. One other thing we need to do in the DSMS is we need to go to the MSL button, the missile control page, and we need to turn on our EO, our electrical optical sensors. This button here starts a timer that's going to count up to, well, it's going to count up to infinity essentially, but when this timer reaches three minutes, that's time, it's counting up now. When this reaches three real minutes, the seeker heads of the Maverick missiles will be fully armed and ready to go. 
And that really is all we need to do there. Uh, you can set up some options to where this EO setting will come on automatically based on a certain bearing, a certain range to target, or a certain waypoint. But we're just going to enable it manually here. Also a certain time stamp, but again, we're just going to enable it manually here um, on the ground so that it's ready to go once we reach the target area. And generally when you're using the Mavericks, you will enable this on the ground so it's nice and warmed up by the time you get up in the air. And again, that takes three real minutes. So when this timer here reads three minutes, it'll be good to go. Just double check EO is on and that's all we need to do. So we'll hit stat, go back to the main page and you see I have here uh, one times AGM 65, oh correction, two times AGM 65H on a triple ejector rack, but I've only got two missiles. Same thing with the AGM 65D. So I have two each of the uh, IR variant and two of the CCD variant. So you can see the differences between them. All right. Get my camera going again. There it goes. And let's get airborne and head over to the targets. And we'll take a look at some of the symbology involved. Sim, an active pause to talk about a few things. So to use the Maverick. We obviously first need to make sure our master arm is on. And let's also make sure and go ahead our t make it our TGP uh, set to on. Because we're going to use that in a bit. Uh, and for this first demonstration, we're going to use the... Uh, let's go ahead and use the AGM-65D first. So that's the IR guided variant. So... In order to use the Maverick, we need to go over to our right side MFD. And let me just pause. And we need to select the Maverick page. So we can do that by cycling with Cooley right short or just by clicking the Mav button. This here is the Maverick control screen. Got a couple of things to talk about here. We can go ahead and make it our sensor of interest with Cooley right long. And let's talk about a couple of things. So uh, we have the crosshairs for the Maverick Seeker. Okay. Uh, we have an FOV box here. This box here, this bounded, uh, is the FOV box. So if we were to, with the Maverick Soy, uh, do China Hat Forward Short. And uh, that kind of messes it up a little. There we go. Zoom it down. That... Um, zooms the Maverick in just slightly. So you can see it's sort of zooming in a little bit. You get a little bit of zoom action with the Maverick Seeker head. We also have a couple of options. Our EO is on. Uh, we can adjust the Maverick's boresight position, which you'll generally not uh, ever need to do, so don't worry about that too much. We can also change its slew sensitivity, so you can move the Maverick around its Seeker head, with the slew control, similarly to how we would use the targeting pod. In fact, back in the day, before targeting pods were really all that commonplace, airplanes that had Mavericks attached would use them sort of as a poor man's targeting pod. So a little fun fact for you there. But again, the Maverick does see forward with a camera, very much in the vein of a targeting pod. Now, with that slew sensitivity, what I tend to do is I will go over to the UFC here. I'll type in the number one. Right now the slew sensitivity is set to 5.0. I'll put it at about one. Some people like one or two. And in general, it doesn't seem like it, but it's supposed to make the slew sensor of the Maverick a little bit less uh, sensitive so it doesn't move around as much when you're trying to slew it uh, and that's uh, that comes in handy so what we want to do is maneuver to get within uh, you know about seven to ten miles of our target and we don't want to be too high let me unpause the camera and look forward again here we don't want to be too high generally you want to be between somewhere somewhere between five and ten thousand feet when you're going to employ Mavericks um, any higher and you'll sometimes have trouble you know getting a lock on the target you'll have trouble finding the targets if you're slewing the Maverick around just uh, let's look a little forward now at the HUD and look at some symbology the Maverick itself 
has this little reticle that's moving around right now. This is called the Maverick Wagon Wheel. This is HUD indication of exactly where the Maverick is looking. And if you look, it also gives us slant range information. So to that exact point on this water surface, or let's see if I can get it uh, right about there on the, on the island part there, was about 9.6 miles. That does fade away quite quickly. We also have a couple of bars over here. We have a, a minimum and maximum range staple here. Uh, the maximum range of the AGM-65 is somewhere in the realm of 9 miles, 8.5, somewhere in there. You can get it to lock on a little bit further out than that, but its accuracy and uh, range is questionable. Um, and you also have a minimum range. Let's see what it roughly, yeah, roughly 2.5-ish miles there, as you can see if I aim it straight down. Uh, so it's not a super long range missile, but it is extremely accurate if you fire it within parameters. So let's see if we can unpause here and go find us something to kill. The way it's going to work, and I'll point this out, is the Maverick Seeker Head. Let me just unpause this camera here so you can see everything. The Maverick Seeker Head, if you look over at the right MFD, has little crosshairs. And the way the Maverick works is it locks onto a target by achieving a contrast lock. So what that means is it's looking for some sort of color change between the background of what it sees and the target that it's trying to lock up um, within the crosshairs. We'll know the crosshairs have locked onto something when the crosshair gates actually close and it becomes a complete crisscross of lines in the middle and the little cross that you see floating around it's a little hard to see because of the white. Let me move the Maverick over here. There we go. You see the little cross that's floating around right there? That tells you roughly where the bore sight of the Maverick is sort of looking. And then you see where the Seeker is actually... In fact, it actually just locked onto something there. Um, let me try that again, actually. That's a good demo. There we go. It's actually locked onto a lamppost just there. But that is what it looks like when the Maverick has actually locked onto something. The crosshair gates close and that little floating cross starts flashing. You break that lock real quick. Reset it to Boresight. And let's get our Maverick aimed down using the wagon wheel roughly where we have some targets. And if we look over at the Maverick screen, you can sort of see the targets in the distance there. In fact, it may even be able to lock them up from this distance. Let's try. It's a little finicky. Come on. Might not be close enough. All right, let's unpause and get a little bit closer. We'll get within maximum range and see if we can fire. So active pause off. We're flying now. The Maverick, if you do TMS down short or TMS aft short, will become ground stabilized. And thus the Maverick Seeker head will be locked to the ground at that particular point. So let's get in a little bit closer. We're inside maximum range now. I'm going to go TMS forward short to command a lock. And active pause real quick. We've now got a lock on that target, and we're within maximum range, so what we can do is unpause and hold weapon release button, rifle. So that Maverick has now fired, and we do get a time to impact down there, so actually that's, uh, that's incorrect, that's the Seeker head being on. Uh, no time to impact, but that Maverick should hit on target. And you might even be able to see it in the Maverick Seeker head. I'll act to pause here so we don't get out of range. Come on, where are you? 
The Maverick's own seeker head is kind of blurry. There it is. Boom. We killed that one over there. The Maverick's own seeker head is kind of blurry. It's not a very good camera. It's not like our targeting pod. With that said, let's uh, switch over to the AGM 65H so you can see the difference. So we do that with the HUD as soy. So that's coolie hat up. EMS left to select the Electro Optical Maverick. And now the Electro Optical Maverick, AGM 65H, has this seeker head. So it's not a FLIR seeker head, it is a straight CCD seeker head, and it's actually already gotten a lock. Uh, the camera on this one is a little bit less blurry than the IR one, but it is also sometimes a little bit more difficult to lock up a target. So we've locked up that target there. In fact, we can actually just fire it. So rifle. There it goes. Let's actually watch this one fly in. So there's the Maverick missile itself. Flying towards the target. It's not a very long burning missile. It basically burns off the rack and then glides towards the target. Boom. Very accurate. Very useful. Now, let's uh, switch back to the infrared guided Maverick. So we see our Maverick over here. Let's also pull up. I'm still in active pause, so I'm just kind of floating in the air here. Uh, let's also pull up our targeting pod. And instead of pulling the targeting pod up on the right, we're actually going to pull it up on the left here. So, with Cooley left short, cycle through the pages, we've now got our targeting pod. So, what I also now need to do is I'm going to make the Maverick soy and boresight it. So now the Maverick is boresight. I'm going to boresight my targeting pod, and I'm going to fly around real quick and get me lined up to find a target with the targeting pod. So, stand by for that. Active pause off. And I'm just going to turn around and get into a good position. All right, so we're <clears throat> facing our target again here. Now, the difference that I want to show with this particular launch is that we're going to first use our targeting pod to find a target and then slew our Maverick over to that target. This is generally easier and more efficient because the targeting pod is much, much better than using the Maverick's own seeker head because the targeting pod can zoom in a lot farther. It can look around at higher uh, off bore side angles and it can designate a speed for our Maverick to use. The Maverick itself can also designate a speed, but um, the usefulness of that is not very, not very high. So Let's uh, look over at our targeting pod. I'm in active pause here just to make this easier for the launch. So let me pause the camera on the targeting pod. Uh, we blew up that island. So let's look at this one. We'll go FLIR mode. We'll zoom in nice and close. We're going to get a point track on this guy. Okay, we see that there. We're going to lock him up as a speed. So that's TMS forward long. And by the way, remember, we're using the targeting pod on the left MFD, so in order to make that our sensor of interest, our soy, it would be coolie left long. And then TMS forward long, as usual, to create the speed. Makes sense so far? All right, so we've got targeting pod. We've created a speed. Let's look back over at our Maverick. And in fact, I'm going to do this while looking just straight forward because I want you to look at the HUD as well as the right MFD. So let's first make the Maverick our soy. So that's Cooley left long. Correction, Cooley right long. I'm getting left and right confused here. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, then we want to now do China hat forward long to slave all sensors to speed. And if you notice, the wagon wheel snapped down to exactly where our SPI is, where our TGP is. And if we look at our Maverick Seeker head, it's now looking at the exact same spot as our targeting pod. 
Now all we need to do to make the Maverick lock is with its soy, TMS forward short to command a lock. And we might need to actually zoom in the FOV, there we go, so it can get a good contrast. TMS forward short, there we go. And it's a little finicky, you might actually notice the Maverick is actually locked onto a slightly different target than we locked up. We're locked onto that center vehicle right there. It's kind of hard to see, but the Maverick is actually locked onto the rightmost vehicle there. So the Maverick doesn't really care what the other sensor is looking at when it goes to try to lock. It just goes for the first contrast lock it finds. Uh, and that can be tricky if there are vehicles clumped together, like in this example. But if they are spread apart and there is just a lone vehicle kind of sitting in the middle of a field, it uh, makes it pretty easy. So with that in mind, we're all ready to fire again. We're within range, so that's going to be... Let me unpause just so we're speeding the bird. And rifle. That's one away. I'm just going to active pause again. Let's watch this Maverick fly in. There it goes. This is the IR Maverick again. The IR Mavericks always have this sort of brown slash gold colored casing. Whereas the EO Mavericks have a white or gray casing. The Maverick flies forward and just glides itself onto the target. It is a very short burning rocket motor, as I mentioned before, so its range is somewhat limited. It's not uh, it's not a very long range weapon, but it is considered standoff. Kaboom! All right, so that's the basics of how you use the AGM sixty five Maverick air to ground missile. It's uh, the workflow to actually fire the missile can be a little bit complex, especially if you mix in the targeting pod method like I showed you. But it's really not that bad. Just a little bit of practice to get used to the workflow of switching back and forth between your MFDs for which one is your sensor of interest, designating the speed, slewing the Maverick, etc. Um, you'll find the Maverick missile to be very effective at taking out uh, vehicles, especially moving vehicles. It's a great tank buster weapon, and uh, yeah, a lot of fun to use. So hope you guys uh, get some use out of that and uh, get out there and practice with your Maverick missiles, and I'll see you next time. Take care.